Welcome back, everybody, to X4 Foundations. I am an old guy gaming, and into this episode, I've got some good news for everybody. Uh, I have decided that I'm very much enjoying X4, uh, and so I went ahead and invested in all three of the DLCs. Yay! So if we take a look at this uh, right here, you can see that we now have additional factions, um, including the Terrans and the Split and extra pirate factions, and basically all the stuff that uh, comes with the three DLCs. I didn't buy the the bundle because the bundle also included the soundtracks, uh, and the soundtracks are nice, but uh, I, I didn't feel justified spending um, money on those. Uh, so it was cheaper for me to just buy the three DLCs. They're 15 bucks a pop, 14 99 something like that, uh, as opposed to buying the bundle. Uh, and yes, I am definitely planning on purchasing uh, Kingdom End when it comes out in a couple of the days as well. Okay, so I did a little bit of research, and um, uh, you can, I, I just double-checked, and you can definitely install the DLCs in the middle of a save game, and you'll be just fine. In fact, uh, I, I, I looked at a couple of Reddit articles, and they were saying you shouldn't, you shouldn't play through vanilla all the way to the end and then install them because then you're missing out on all of the cool stuff that the DLCs provide, uh, you know, along the journey. Right. So, uh, that after reading that, I decided, yep, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just install them now so we can start taking advantage of the cool new features. Plus it, it, uh, among other things, it makes the, uh, uh the universe a lot bigger for us too. So there's going to be more sections. Okay. So let's see what do I have to update you guys on. Let's take a look first of all at uh, well, actually, let's go back to the faction screen for a minute. Um, I am now um, a friend of the Republic with Antigone. Um, and I went over and got my um, I got my uh, promotion ceremony from them over here in Antigone Memorial, which also opened up Antigone Memorial to us. Um, <clears throat> and I decided not to do that on Cambry because it's really the same spiel. You go talk to them. They say, we, we're happy with the work you've done. Uh, you get some benefits with this new promotion, but if you lose the promotion, you lose the benefits. In the case of the Paranid, it will also kill you if that happens. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, so I decided, you know, we've already done that a few times now, so I'm not going to show that again on camera. Um, and so that being said, we are also now Honor Guard of Tsar with the God Realm of Paranid, which opens up their capital vessels to us. And we... Um, have already done Talati Company and Argon Federation in terms of the second promotion. So we're doing pretty good. Um, Ministry of Finance is a plus eight. That's just gotten there naturally. I haven't done anything deliberately. Well, no, wait a minute. You know what? I take the bet. I, I, I think I did do one go clear the minefield mission for them off camera and I got like two points of rep. Uh, but other than that, I haven't done anything else to get rep with them. And then also Hatikva. Wait. Not Hatikva, but yeah, no, I guess that's it. Okay, I thought, wait a minute, I thought there was another f faction. Yeah, okay, I guess that's where we're at. Uh, we're currently at plus 14 with HOP um, and, you know, are, are continuing to raise that through trading. Now, uh, probably at some point, because HOP is enemies with the human federations or with, you know, Argon and Antigone and all those guys, um, I'm we, we, we're probably going to have to choose sides at some point. Um, but I'm going to try and, you know, milk both sides or stay friends with both sides, I should say, as long as I can get away with it because it benefits us to do so. Okay, now, next thing, let's take a look at our finances here. So if we go to account management, um, my station has about th three and a half million surplus money. So we're going to put that into our wallet. And then if we look at uh, this screen, we have a net worth of 91.7 million. Um, in terms of our money. So uh, we're doing very good. Why does it say that cash is still in the station account? Didn't I just move it out of there? Uh, yeah, I did. Oh, maybe it just hasn't updated yet, I guess. Total cash in station accounts. Yeah, I'm not sure why that hasn't updated. It says that our... Available cash is 73,691. This says 75,966. Uh, yeah, I don't know. 
Maybe this is more than just our available cash on hand, but I thought that's what that was. Anyway, all that to say, we're doing pretty good financially. Um, our, our little fledgling industry here is, is doing pretty good. Um, you know, moving to these faster ships like we did has definitely paid off. Uh, we're still getting uh, getting accosted by pirates, but uh, my ships are able to get away from them. There's only been two instances so far that they actually took damage uh, to the hull, but they were still able to get away. And then I just, you know, had them repair and then go on their merry way. So, so we're doing good uh, on that front. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit about what my what my long term goals are for this series. Um, and maybe some, you know, sh shorter term goals too. Uh, and this, this can't may and may be affected. I should say by the storylines in the game. I don't know. I don't know really the storylines at all because I've made it a point not to watch any videos or read up on anything story related because I want to experience that firsthand. Um, so this is all what I have planned right now without knowing how the story may affect things, you know, in the long run. Okay. So basically what I, what I have decided to do with this playthrough and with Matthias Reaver is that, you know, we are going to be a good aligned character. Um, we are going to, we're not going to be a pirate or do anything nefarious, like, you know, hack into modules and steal stuff. Um, but we're going to be an upright, uh, an upstanding citizen, and we're going to try and make the galaxy as safe as possible so that we can um, have um, trade, you know, and, and profits going on without, you know, pirates and Xenon in particular. Uh, and possibly some of these other new races from the DLC infringing on our territory and blowing up our stations and things like that. So that's that's what I've chosen to do for this playthrough. Um, and that doesn't mean that down the road... I might do a, another playthrough later on where we become a pirate and be a quote unquote bad guy at that point, but that that's not what we're going to do in this episode or I'm sorry, in this uh, series. Okay. So, um, kind of my, my next, uh, the next step there, there's two things that I want to do. Uh, well, no, actually there's three things that I want to do really quick. Um, or coming up next, I should say, I want to keep building our station. And what we're going to aim for next on the station is a whole parts production. And in order to do whole parts, we also are then going to need graphene production. We already, we already have the refined metals going. Uh, so we need to set up graphene factory um, and whole part in order to do a whole part factory. Uh, I also want to get a habitation module. Habitation modules are very expensive, however. But again, uh, I know that I could hack it, but that doesn't fit with our character's character <laughs> uh, so we're gonna we're gonna just buy that stuff legit because you know in the long run guys we're gonna be swimming in money anyways we're gonna be billionaires if not trillionaires when it's all said and done of course there's probably i don't know maybe there's a money cap on the game but nevertheless uh that's the route that i've decided that we're going to take um and then after that we're going to probably start looking at working our way up to a claytronics uh production and uh, because, as you all know, or most of you probably know, we need hull parts and claytronics in order then to build uh, anything, really. Um, and so the the mid-term goal with all that is to basically be self-sufficient and be able to provide all of our own materials for building, um, you know, future bases, which we will, you know, be working on, which is the plan. Okay? Um, now, in terms of a home system, that's not really something you know, that I can or want to decide right now, but I have been kind of keeping my eye on Nopilios's Fortune 4 just because it's already practically empty. It does have one Hadikva pharmaceutical station, um, but it's also in, in, in a pretty, a fairly central location. Well, I mean, at present, that's going to change though as we unlock more territory. Um, and so I've thinking about maybe setting up shop here because I eventually want to have my own sector where I pretty much own the sector, um, you know, down the road. So I've been looking at that, but but I'm not going to make any hardcore decisions in that regard until we can unlock more of the map and kind of see what else is available, which leads me into the next thing. And that is that uh, I, I want to do some exploring. And I, I know I can send uh, out my own, you know, my, the AI ships to do that, but I want to do it myself for a couple of reasons. One, I enjoy it. 
and it's, it's neat to open up a new sector and then you know read the lore about that sector um but and two i want to I, I want to do that myself on my first playthrough of X4 just to kind of experience it. And then, you know, maybe in future playthroughs, once I know how the map is actually laid out, <coughs> I'll have um, I'll have the AI ships do the, you know, the opening up of sectors. But we're going to do that ourselves for the most part uh, in this playthrough. Okay, and so let's see. The third thing we want to do uh, or that I want to do is it's time for us to start up in our game in terms of our military force. Um, and so... What I'm, what I want to do, I know, you know, from from looking at some videos and from getting some feedback from you guys in the comments, that the split have some very desirable ships, um, you know, but the problem is that we haven't unlocked the split yet, and it might be a while before, you know, before we do that. I don't want you guys to tell me where they are. I want to find them myself. So please do not, you know, don't ever give me any spoilers on anything. Uh, please appreciate that. <clears throat> um, you know, kind of knowing what my plans are here. So what, you know, for now we're going to, we're going to go with, uh, with the nemesis, um, because again, it's, it's a, a highly favored, uh, Corvette and, and we're also going to go Corvette because, you know, I've been, I have the Cerberus frigate, but, um, I want to, I want something that's going to pack a little bit more punch. And what I'm thinking is, is having a small squadron where we might have something like three or four nemesis, nemesis, and then have an actual fighter squadron um, accompanying uh, those ships. And we might, you know, we may even keep the Cerberus too and continue using it as a carrier, you know, a mini carrier <clears throat> for either drones or laser towers or whatever. Haven't decided that fully. But the main point here is that we are going to go ahead and start purchasing um, our first Nemesis and probably eventually building up to, like I said, a, a squadron of those Nemesis. Um, okay. Once I get to the point where I can support multiple, you know, fleets, you know, then we're going to start thinking about getting large freighter transport for certain things and having escorts for those. But we're not really quite at that point right yet. All right. So I think that kind of gets us caught up on everything. Let's take a quick look at our uh, our personnel here. Um, so people are leveling. So if we just look at current roles, you can see that... Um, Uckman here is our top person overall. He's maxed out on engineering and he's working on morale. And it's interesting too that, you know, these top pilots are like on our trader, you know, our traders and our miners and so forth. So it just kind of goes to show that these these ships here uh, are very effective in, in leveling these guys up. In fact, you know, it goes all the way down to here. All of these guys on up, guys and gals, are you know four stars so that's where we are in terms of pilots though um let's take a look at captains so we still don't quite have um ed monk we're gonna call him ed monk he's getting close and once he hits three stars then we're gonna put him on um advanced trading uh and join cali and um zezosis yalos as our top uh, pilots but he's not quite there yet but should happen it not you know not too much longer from now uh, so that's where we are right currently with our personnel okay so uh, we are currently at the Argon Wharf and I'm here with Rinda Fisty and she's the uh, Argon representative I'm terribly sorry to disrupt your magnificent focus what um hello there hello ship has completed its travels right in this sector. Somehow, it is managing to distort the station sensors, preventing me from witnessing a solar event in the Great Reef Nebula. I suggest you take care of this annoyance before it manages to disrupt even more observations. Um, okay. Uh, that wasn't expected. I hope this is a ship I can take care of. Find unidentified vessel. That was totally not expected. Um, I guess he said it's in this sector and it's disrupting his something or other. Okay. Uh, where is my... Where's my frigate? Okay, it's right there. It's just patrolling around the station right at the moment. Okay, well, that uh, we better deal with that. But before we leave, though... Let's go ahead and get a couple blueprints from Rinda here. 
Uh, so what we need for hull parts is uh, we need hull, a hull part production, which is four and a half million, and a graphene production. And I think that's all we need um, to get started on hull part production itself. Um, if we Good luck out there. thank you, if we go to here. And we go to station modules and production modules and select hull part production. It requires um, energy cells, graphene, and refined metals. Okay, good. So we have we already have the energy cells and the refined metals. Um, so we just need the graphene. And the graphene production requires methane on energy cells. I have um, I do actually have a gas ship that I just I've just been having it trade on its own because I haven't had a need for gas at the station yet but um, what we'll do then is put that ship uh, on methane well we won't we won't do it we'll have the station manager do it um, once we get to that module set up so it's ready to go okay so we got that taken care of let's head on back uh, to Grand Exchange and see if we can figure out what's going on with this ship that Bo Boso told us about so I'll, I will see you guys uh, in Grand Exchange Distorting ship? Your much anticipated arrival fills me with considerable relief and delight. Alright, so Boso just popped up and he said wonderful, and then I hit the record button. So you guys heard pretty much everything else that he said. Um what we're gonna do is we're going to jump into our frigate, which I have just sitting here waiting uh for me to do oh wait i gotta deselect the ship first teleport too um and then as far as the pegasus goes i'm just gonna remove that order and then he'll go back to just updating um cerberus sentinel updating station information okay so let's hop in here now uh, i made some changes to my frigate loadout I basically have a full load of um, I have a full load of repair drones I got rid of the defense drones and then I loaded up my hull with a bunch of laser towers um, I'm not sure I'm gonna keep what the hell's going on here I'm not sure I'm gonna keep that um, configuration but uh, I'm, I'm kind of trying that but we're also going to be um, upgrading to Nemesis's Nemesis's anyways. But like I said, I'll probably keep this ship too, at least at this point, and we'll see. We'll see how things go. Okay, so that suggests there's a ship doing a long scan, and if he's doing a long scan, it means it's kind of coming from this way. I don't think. Can we scan again too? I mean, to find a ship like that? I, I'm not sure. Let's just go to the where the quest wants us to go first, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, so it seems like it's coming from here. There's something right there. Yeah, there, that's it. Okay. Let's head over there and see what what's going on here. What do we got here? Okinawa Research. Okinawa Research. Mm. That's an interesting looking vessel. It almost that looks like a Terran vessel. Sajaris Pioneers. Comms channel open. One moment, please. Greetings. I am Dr. Rick Feynman, chief scientist of the Oberth and in charge of Project Genesis. Our research vessel is currently observing anomalies and gravimetric shears in this region. <laughs> Just like we were doing. Um... Project Genesis? Oh, it's just part of our gravimetric studies. 
For now, it's just a mass of data from our sensors, but we'll publish our research once it is concluded. Anything else? How long will this take? We are currently lacking antimatter cells to complete our observations. If you can organize a delivery to this vessel, we'll be able to greatly advance our timetable. It appears mm. that they are researching the same anomaly which brought the station over here. Most of the gravimetric charge dispersed during that event, but they brought quite an array of equipment to examine the traces. Let's just hope that this satisfies their curiosity and leads to their departure. What if they send another empty ship with antimatter cells and blow us up like we did? <laughs> okay, deliver 10 units of antimatter cells to Oberth. Okay, so... Um, no, 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 don't do that. So, okay, Oberth is here now, so I'm assuming they'll probably stay on the the map now that we know where they are. Either that or I'll have to drop a nav beacon, but let's do this. Let's go to here, and our courier vanguard is used for this sort of thing. So I want you, where are you, by the way? Okay. So we need to find some antimatter cells. Let's close this. And I want you... Um, you have a little bit of, like a tiny, tiny bit of so soya husk in your in your inventory. Okay, so we're looking for antimatter cells. Weapon component factory. You're in Trinity Sanctum. Let's put it in here. Antimatter. Okay, so there are... Where did that go? some over an unholy retribution oh no those are buys we need we need selling okay here we go um selling for 60 wait what no they're buy those are the guys i want to buy right okay Here we go. Okay, so this is in Grand Exchange Refined Goods Complex. Oh, they're send they must have extra ones. Okay, so let's send our our ship over here. Trade with these guys and buy ten antimatter cells. Confirm. Okay, I'll bring you guys back uh, when we're ready to deliver these cells to whoever that is in that ship. I forgot to click the confirm button. I didn't forget I accidentally misclicked. Confirm. There we go. Actually, you know what? While, while we're waiting for that to happen, um, let's go ahead and uh, what I want Excuse me, what I, I want to do is I want to get a Nemesis Vanguard. Um, let's do the comparison. Okay, so we'll go ship comparison. Uh, we'll go medium. We'll go Nemesis Vanguard Corvette. Uh, we'll do a high preset for the moment. And then we'll also go... Nemesis Vanguard Sentinel, which we can get from HOP. I preset. Okay, so the Sentinel is, has 2,000 more on the hull, but the shields are the same. But it's it's a little it's a little slower and a little less agile. 
got a little more uh, container storage, but it, can only, but it has two less crew. So th there isn't really a massive difference between these two ships. Um, so I think I would prefer the Vanguard because, I mean, 400 meters per, spec for, uh, per second for a medium ship is really fast. That's one of the, the cool things about this ship. Um, so I think it's the Vanguard that we're gonna we're gonna start building our Corvette uh, squadron with. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get out here, and let's also flip the map around so it's the right direction. And we will be buying these from Trinity Sanctum, or no, sorry, not Trinity Sanctum, HOP. No, yeah, Trinity Sanctum. They're the ones that have the Vanguard version. Um, also, I'm going to do a quick save here, just in case I screw something up. I have a feeling like what's happening right now is probably maybe part of the Cradle of Humanity DLC as opposed to the main storyline, but I just I just don't know. Um, so we'll find out one way or the other. Okay, so Parented Wharf. Buy ships. Medium. Uh, Nemesis, what does the Gorgon look like? Well, that's kind of cool. Can dock a small ship. Um, they have a hundred deployable, 17 crew. I still don't know what units means. Eight units, what does that mean? One of you guys were telling me in the comments that this is this Gorgon is, is quite a bit better than the Cerberus as far as frigates goes. Um, so, I don't know. We might look into that, but right now we want to focus on the Nemesis. Okay, so let's start with a high preset, but then we're going to make changes. So we definitely want to keep the Combat Mark III engine, um, which is gets the speed up to actually 412, which is great. Um, we will go with the Mark II thruster because it doesn't make that much difference and it's significantly cheaper. For the shield generators, I kind of like the Talati shield with this. So what we might end up doing is just putting the cheap shields on it for now or maybe hmm, it'd be risky not doing any shields. Yeah, we should probably at least put. Trade deals been confirmed. Sending you information now. Okay. Um. Oh, that's probably our dude. Okay. Here, let's. We'll come back to this. I should be able to just tell him to trade with these guys. Yeah, trade with. Why they're making me do this instead of just going and getting their own antimatter cells is beyond me, man. There he goes. Guess he's going to dock with them. Trade has been confirmed. Sending you information now. Our research team thanks you for your cooperation. We need your help in putting this antimatter to good use. We will need ships at the specified locations to initiate a synchronized long-range scan. We will be enlisting, but if you have any friends who can join us, now would be a good time to ask them along. Position ships at specified locations. Okay, so I guess I guess we could tell our own ships to do that, right? Um, so let's tell the Peggy to go here. Why and wait? Let's grab our elite vanguard, who's currently exploring in second contact and have them go there, and then we'll take 
Um, well, here, we'll have the Falcon go here. Okay, so um, the Sentinel's here, so it'll take him a couple moments to get over here, but it shouldn't take him too terribly long. I suppose I could just take the frigate to the third spot, but I kind of want to stay near the uh, near this ship for now, just to see what if they get up to any shenanigans. Do we have any info on this guy? Sajaris Pioneers. Um, are they uh, their own faction? Yes. Maybe we'll get some. Um, Maybe we'll get some faction with them by helping them out here. I hope. Oh, have I been backing up this whole time? <laughs> we'll just we'll just stay nearby in case they try anything <coughs> anything shady here. You know, it's gonna it's gonna take him a little bit of time to get over here, so let's go back to our nemesis shopping. Um <clears throat> Okay, buy ships. Nemesis Vanguard Corvette. High preset. Okay, so we got the combat Mark III engines, we've got the Mark II thrusters. Um, you know, here, you know what actually we could do is we could come, let's do a quick comparison on that. I just want to see if it's, if I feel like it's going to be worth it to haul them all the way up to Tilati space to change out the shields. Um, okay, so let's get rid of the Sentinel and we'll keep this Nemesis Vanguard as is. Well, actually, you know, we'll change it. Aaron and Mark II sh shields. Right, okay, so confirm that. So that's the one with the Parent shields. Now if we add this again, Nemesis Vanguard. High preset. But put this one with Talati shields. They're obviously going to be better, but how much better is the thing. I'm not worried about the rest of that stuff for this comparison. Okay, so the Talati shields are going to give us another 24, almost 2,500 shield. But, you know, with the faster uh, or the longer recharge delay. Oh, and a slower recharge rate, too. I mean... I don't know. That's fairly significant. If I if I buy the Parented shields and then exchange them for the Talatis later, I probably don't get the full amount of money back. Uh, I haven't actually confirmed that, but that would be my guess. It's a it's probably enough of a difference to do, but it's not like we absolutely have to do this kind of difference, you know? So I think, eh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I think let's just go with the parented shields for now. And if I feel like I'm struggling, then maybe we can upgrade to the Talatis later. Okay, so now that we've figured that out, Let's get back here. Um, oh, are we in the wrong place? Oh, yeah, we were at the Allied shop. We need to go here. Buy ships. Nemesis Vanguard. High preset. Combat engines, Mark II thrusters. We'll go with the 
Heronid shields. Now for front weapons. Um we could go with the mass drivers, but they are so expensive. I mean, even the even the Mark 1 mass drivers are ridiculously expensive. I mean, look at this. This is like 14.2 million. So, I don't I don't know that I want to spend that much money on a single ship at this point. So, you know, the the role of the main guns on this ship are going to be to kill peas and probably, you know, go after stations too. So, if we just stick with plasma cannons, it's going to be so much cheaper cuz right now we're at 14.2 million. But if we instead change to plasmas across the board, now it's 2.9 million. I mean, it's a huge difference. We could even possibly switch out a couple of those for some, um, you know, some missile launchers, perhaps. If we did that, maybe what we could do is we could make the, the two side ones missile launchers, or we could even just do one launcher in the middle. Um, I'm going to th think about that for later. Right now, I think I'm going to keep them on, on plasma cannons. Okay, so for turrets, uh, let's just go with bolt turrets for now. And I could take this up later to Argon Space uh, and get flak turrets later, but um, we're just going to go with bolt turrets for now. Okay, so for consumables... How many laser tower? Oh, you can't put Mark II laser towers in these. Oh, that sucks. All right. Uh, well, how many? You can put 100 normals in. We've got maximum flares. Tracker mine. Okay, well, let's... Um, let's at least put some satellites in and some nav beacons and some resource probes. I'm going to have to read up on the mines again. Uh, I mean, I, I know generally know what they do, but I, I don't think I'm going to get any, any mines for now. Okay. Software. We don't need, uh, well, this this first ship is going to be our personal ship, probably, so we're going to have the good software in here. But subsequent ones that we purchase, um, we won't have all that stuff in it, most likely. Okay, so. I think we're okay on all that. And now, of course, we want crew. Now, I do want Marines on here and we have a couple marines on another ship too and one of you guys were telling me in the comments that I should take my marines when I'm not actually using them as marines and put them as service crews so that their morale will start to level up um, and that is something I do plan to do so yeah why don't we keep this the way it is so we'll have four marines and four service crew Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to save this as um, this is going to be Reaver's uh, Corvette. And then when I buy the next one, I'll load this one in, but then change it for, for the AI. Okay. So that brings us up to just a hair over 3 million, which isn't bad. <clears throat> um, but of course, we're going to need to get some turret components down here before we can s finish it. Okay, so let's add that to the shopping list and confirm the order. All right, now let's see where we're, where we're at with all of this business. Um, 
Okay, he's just about there. So that timing worked out pretty good. It looks like you're positioning your ship for the synchronized scan. Please try to be precise. We don't want junk readings cluttering up our database. Once you initiate the scan from your ship, the other captains will follow your lead. Okay. Um, are we supposed to scan in any particular direction? Long range scan now. Let's just see what happens. receiving the data stream. We've got what we were after. Thank you for your support. You're welcome. We're far from home, short on hands, and have additional tasks which need doing. If you're interested, please meet me on our ship. Talk to Dr. Rick Feynman. Um, well, okay, but dude, I've got, like, a ton of things I need to do. <laughs> um... Is is Bo so happy now? Here, let's uh let's go here. Reclaiming what was lost. A clean conscience. Um this difficulty is trivial. The Sajarian's work is not yet done. Their chief scientist requests your attendance to discuss further steps. Okay. Um I kind of don't feel like messing with this right now. It looks to me, though, like there isn't a time limit on it, so we can probably put it on hold. So I think I'm going to do that. If there was a time limit on it, um, you know, then I would, I would do it. But I think what I'm going to do for the moment is put this on hold. Um, because I want to get going on building out my hull parts factory and get my nemesis uh, squadron going. So, with that being the case, I think we're going to wrap up this episode here. And what I will do off camera is I'll get the hull parts factory and the graphene factory built and up and running. I'll get my uh, nemesis squadron built out and ready to go. And when that's done, um, I'll probably bring you guys back at that point, and we will either continue this storyline here or we will start doing some exploring. Uh, so that is the tentative plan for now, but, you know, if something changes, then, of course, I'll let you know in the next episode. And so with that being said, thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and share out the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.